Good morning. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning from Birmingham. It is freezing outside. Um, and forgive the fact that I look a mess, but I have been going since 6.30 this morning and um, this is some hairdo I have here. This is what I look like when I first wake up in the morning. You're welcome, okay? I'm quite sure you've never seen anything so beautiful. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's fucking Maybelline. Um, anyway, um, Max is finally coming out of upstairs quarantine this morning, so he's very excited. Um, and um, the girls are off at school. Max is upstairs on his Zoom for school, and I'm going to work from the house today. Look at this hair. Uh, what's up, Patriots Nation? And by the way, this is Freehold Township Patriots. This is not the New England Patriots. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about timing. Um, for those of you who know me, you know that I truly believe God's time is the right time all the time. That's my faith. That's not everybody's faith, but that is truly what I believe. And when I lose something, miss out on something, drag my feet on something, I tend to uh, convince myself that, um, or fall back on is a better thing than convince myself. I tend to fall back on the fact that, um, you know, if God really wanted me there or in that spot or, or at that event or in that movie or whatever it is, that he would have put me there, that it would have worked out. Um, uh, so I have had, first of all, I have to tell you that I have had the most trans emotionally transformative week in so long. I have had the most difficult parenting week that I have had in a very, very long time. I was very honest with people on Facebook about the other night. Um, I hit, when I tell you that I hit bottom on parenting, like I hit bottom, I hit bottom. Like I, I, you know, my grandmother from New York, my old, you know, meme who used to call me Jamila, she would have called it hollering. She would have said, why are you hollering? Don't holler. I was hollering, y'all. And I'm talking about hollering, okay? I had had it. And then we had a family meeting and we had this come to Jesus and things have been better the last day and a half. And you know what? I'll take it. Small victories. Um, but anyway, I do you guys remember when you were little and you wanted to jump off the diving board and maybe it's not you, maybe you can think about your kids now or a kid that you've seen at the pool where they're standing on the diving board and they're looking over and they, everyone's going, come on, jump. And they, they keep, they look over and they go back and they look over and they go back and they put their toes on the edge and they come back and they, they, you know, they're trying to psych themselves up to do it. And then they finally jump and they get the same result that they would have gotten if they jumped two seconds before or two seconds after, but they need to get there. That is what so many of us are doing with our lives right now. Our toes are on the edge. We're looking over. We're coming back. We're looking over. We're coming back. Relationships, work, parenting, diet, exercise regimen, uh, starting an OnlyFans, uh, whatever it is in your life right now that you are waiting for the right time. I have been dreaming about a coffee shop. I, my friend Kelly, who owns Batch in Manasquan, is my biggest inspiration. Not because, by the way, 
she has the best coffee or whatever. By, she has great coffee and y'all know I love the protein balls and I, you know, I'm, I'm in my kitchen every day trying to make, uh, you know, Jamie's version of that coffee, uh, protein ball and blah, blah, blah. But it's that she, she put her toes on the edge and she took a deep breath and she jumped. She has a partner, uh, Christine, but they, so they jumped in the middle of COVID. And I am so inspired by, by women right now, especially. Look, you know, men, we love you, but this is a different conversation. By women right now who are not going back and forth, waiting, waiting. Because let me tell you something. I have been thinking about opening a coffee shop for years. I think I would be so good at it. And I just, it was always something. I'm traveling, there's too many trips on the books. I got this movie, I got this book, I got this TV show, and everything was an excuse. It was me with my toes on the edge, looking over going, nope, too scared. So I'll just stay busy, I'll make it look like, oh, there's just no time, because I'm trying to do this and that and a third. There was always time. That was, there was always time. I was just afraid. And I drug my feet. I found the perfect spot. I was too afraid and I lost the perfect spot. I lost it. Somebody else got it. And now that spot's going to be an ice cream shop. And it is what it is. And I, every day I remind myself of the feeling that I felt when I learned that the spot I really wanted is now somebody else's blessing. Now I know in God's timing, and I believe that that's exactly where those people were meant to be, and I'm gonna find the right spot for me. But here I am on the platform, toes on the edge, looking over, ready to make the leap, and I'm trying to find the, the right place, the, the right spot. I have to tell you, I know it sounds corny or, you know, whatever, but, there is no right time. There is no right time. When you put your toes on the edge of that platform, you are always going to feel the fear of what happens if I fail. What happens if I fail? My friend Kelly, Superhero project, wanted to start a charity for, for NICU babies. Huge event that I just spoke at in Philadelphia, 650 people. That, that's, that takes a level of a servant's heart. You have to have a servant's heart. Lord, I serve you first, and now I'm going to serve my community. And that community is the NICU community. Me, that's Kelly. Me, Lord, I serve you first. It sounds like all the people I hang out with are Kellys, I just realized. They're different Kellys, by the way. <laughs> so funny, Kelly at Batch and Manasquan, Kelly and Philly with the Superhero Project, Kelly, my partner here in Birmingham for the coffee shop. I got Kellys coming out the wazoo. Um, but... I just keep telling God now, Lord, I serve you and I want to serve coffee in my community. That is what I want to do. That is, that is it for me, right? So I keep trying to figure out like, what have I been so afraid of? What if I fail? What am I afraid of? Let's talk about where the fear is coming from. The fear is coming from exactly Jenny, Exactamente, exactamente. What if you succeed? Amen, okay? Oh my gosh, Natalia, that's actually a great idea. Natalia said I should name my coffee shop Serve. Hello, Serve. Um, what am I afraid of? Let's get down to where the fear really comes from. What if I take a chance publicly and it doesn't work? Then everybody will determine, decipher, whatever, that I am a failure. Am I a failure in life? Or would I be a failure in one journey? 
in one road. How many times have you gone down a road and been like, this is not the place I'm supposed to go. And you pull into a driveway and you turn around. Could you imagine if you pulled over on that road and was like, well, I guess I'm going to die in this car now because I can't keep going. I went down the wrong road. So now I'm just going to pull the car over and die right here on wrong road 57. No, you get in the driveway, you turn around and you go down the other road and you put your damn ways on and you figure that shit out. So if I open a coffee shop and it doesn't work, I just got to get in somebody's driveway, turn around and go down a different road. Right? That's it. Exactly, Bethany. If you, if I fail, then I fail. Doesn't mean I never try again. It just means my first approach didn't work. But by the way, if you look at babies trying to walk, how many times do babies get up and try to walk and fall? And, and we say, come on, you can do it. Get up. When did we stop doing that baby voice to ourselves? When do we stop doing that amazing baby voice reminding us to get up? Come on, you can do it. Come on, walk to mommy. Okay, they fall, they get back up. Could you imagine if the first time a baby fell, he was like, fuck walking. I'm never walking again. This doesn't work for me. I'm not a walker, I'm a crawler. I'm gonna crawl for the rest of my life. No. You, we have to use that baby voice, that encouraging baby voice for ourselves. You can do this. Come on. You got this. Get up. Come on. Walk to mommy. <laughs> so I just, there is no right time. The right time is now. I am putting it into the universe and I've continued to put it into the universe that I am looking for the perfect spot. I have told God, I want the perfect spot and it doesn't have to be perfect looking. It doesn't have to be the perfect looking spot. I will do the work. I will paint, I'll hang lights. Shit, I will open it up to co the Coffee Talk community. Everybody come in and help me fix this space. I am not ashamed to ask for help. I promise you. So I am letting everybody know I am looking for this spot. I want it to be great. Um, and what I will say is I am very grateful for the people in the community that are excited for me, that are reaching out, that are telling people. Yesterday I went to see a spot in Liberty Park which is not really my community. It's part of Estavia, but it's like a bubble. It's like a new community. And I went to see a spot because somebody reached out to the leasing company and said, this girl who does coffee talk is looking for a space and we need coffee and you need to call her. And they actually called me and said, will you come look at our spot? I mean, if that ain't God, now I don't know that's the right spot for me because like I said, it's not really my community. It is in my town, but it's like 20 minutes away from my house. I'm not saying it can't work, but I'm just saying it's a little bit far. But I feel like this is all now that I've surrendered to my fear and now that I've said, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing it. Because I kept saying, maybe. I kept saying, I might open a coffee shop. I'm thinking about opening a coffee shop so that if I got too scared and didn't do it, people wouldn't think I was afraid. They would just think I didn't have the time. The truth is you got time for whatever it is that sets your soul on fire. You have time for whatever it is that is calling your name. You have time for whatever it is that keeps you up at night or gets you out of bed in the morning. You have time for the things that excite you, for your passion projects. You got time for what you want to have time for. That's a fact. So when you say you don't have time for something, that just means you don't want it bad enough, period. So I have the time. I was just afraid. So I kept thinking, I kept saying, oh, I think I'm gonna open a call. I'm thinking about it. I don't really know. I'm just looking at things. I'm just doing whatever, you know? Now I'm saying, no, everybody hear me. 
I am building State of Style out and it is going to be huge and it's gonna have all my favorite products and Mary is gonna run it for me and we are gonna lift Mary up and we are gonna move her forward to the next phase of her life and I am gonna open a coffee shop and I'm gonna serve my God and I'm gonna serve my community because that is what I want to do, period. It doesn't have to be what other people want to do. It, nobody has to understand it. Jamie, why would you give up making movies in Hollywood to open a coffee shop? Why would you give up having sex with whoever you want to have sex with to get married? I don't know, Fran, because that's what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? We give up a lot of shit. We give up a lot of shit to have the next thing, to have what we want, to have security, to have joy, to have love. Everything is a sacrifice. Do you know that I pee in my pants because I had children? I can't laugh or jump or cough or sneeze or run without peeing in my pants. If that ain't a sacrifice, I don't know what is. I actually sacrificed my bladder to bring people into this world. So don't talk to me about sacrifice. Okay, I see so many women that I wanna make out with, a lot. A lot of women that I wanna make out with, but I don't and I can't because I sacrificed, okay? I sacrificed. So, you're already doing it. You're already making huge, brave steps in your life. So what are you afraid of? You know? Oh, Danielle, thank you. Danielle said she would make out with me. And you know what, Danielle? I'm going to take that and put it in my pocket. I am. I think you'd be very happy. I think I'm a good kisser. But I can't kiss you right now because I made a sacrifice. It's called marriage. Anyway. There is no right time. And I am gonna sell, oh, Shiraz, you are seen. I am gonna sell so many great things in my coffee shop. You guys are gonna love it. You're gonna come in and be like, I got thank you cards. I got this. I got coffee. I got pow like smoothies. I got a power balls or whatever we wanna call them. Cause you know you want balls in your mouth, ladies. Don't lie. So I'm just saying, whatever it is that you are afraid of, uh, me too. Me too. I'm terrified, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And, you know, my biggest thing was, what if I say that I'm going to scale back on Hollywood People will think I failed. So what? So what if everybody thinks I couldn't hack it in Hollywood? I know that's not true. I've made four studio films. Do you know how many people work in Hollywood and never make one studio film? I made four. I wrote a book. It's got five stars on Amazon. Five stars. What am I? What, I had my own TV show. Who cares that it only went one season? How many people never had one season of their own TV show? 99.999% of the population. What the fuck am I need to be afraid of? So this August, August 19th, 2022, my next studio film comes out. It's called Beast. It stars Idris Elba. And you guys are going to love it. I'm writing another book. How do you like them apples? But it's fiction and it's erotic thriller. And it's going to have mystery and thriller and sex. I have my own podcast. Tell me what to do. I was terrified. Who the hell wants to listen to me? Turns out a lot of people. So I'm, I'm scared all the time. I'm afraid all the time. So, so what if I fail? Are you guys going to love me any less if I'm like, guys, I have to close the coffee shop. It just didn't work. You're going to say, no, we're so sorry that it didn't work. We love you. And we're very sorry. Of course, because that's what supportive people do. The same thing if you said, if I said my marriage didn't work. 
you would say, I'm so sorry. We love you. I'm so sorry. So this is it. We are being scared together. Okay? We're afraid and we know it. We're also sexy and we know it, but we're also afraid and that's okay. So I want you to put in the comments right now, what are you afraid of? What are you not doing right now that you're afraid of? Because now we could just be scared together. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. All right, I love you. Now I have all these new ideas for the names for the coffee shop because I was thinking local, I was thinking rise, I was thinking aroma. Now I think serve is a great name. Um, Phil, mm, I don't like Phil as much, but I do like serve. I think that's an interesting word because I think it talks about a lot of, it's a good word. And I like that it's one word. I love the word rise. I love the word local. I do like aroma. A lot of people like aroma, but it could kind of sound like a candle shop. Um, but anyway, um, um, Eric, I have to block you, buddy. Sorry. Um, rise and serve. Well, I don't want to do, um, more than one word. I just want one word. So it's either local because then you could say like, drink local, eat local. I love that. Serve is a great word. And I love rise. I think rise is a very empowering word. Rise to the occasion, rise in the morning. Um, and I, I, uh, a lot of people love rise. It's in the lead, by the way, it's in the lead. Um, I don't want to name it coffee talk because I don't know why. I just don't. I want one word. I'm sweating, y'all. I took you to church. <sighs> um, anyway, local, rise, aroma, serve. Um, Rise up to God. Amen. All right. I love you guys so, so much, so much. I have to go to London next week. So I'll be in London for work. Um, and, but I don't leave till Thursday, a week from today. I cannot believe I leave a week from today. Um, and so much. Okay. I love you, and I hope that you have a great, great day.